Hi, as you know, I'm a business models junkie. And a lot of the thing that's driving uh, new business models and uh, the businesses built around them uh, is spare capacity. So I want to step you through a few of the elements of spare capacity and how that's sort of impacting on business models and businesses. So firstly, let's define spare capacity. So imagine that's a building. Uh, it's quite easy to get your head around uh, an unused portion of a building. So let's say we've got 15% of our building that's unused. So we're paying the money, but we're not getting any value from that. It's clearly spare capacity. But if we think about it in a different way, and we think, well, that building's only used during business hours, we're actually only, it's worse than that 15% spare capacity. We're only using 40 hours out of 168. So just that equation alone means that we're only using 24% of that. So that's a lot of capex sitting there for most of the time, not generating any value. So that's a building. But if we think about something else, um, say the car, which is the second most expensive purchase of most families, it's even worse. So the average car in the Western world is usually less than two hours a day. So that's 14 hours out of 168. So that's about 8.3%. Now that's pretty awful, awful use of capex for something that's the second most expensive purchase that most families make. But it gets worse because how many seats are in, in the average car? Five. How many seats are typically occupied? One. So if we apply that, it really takes the, uh, the use of capex of the second most expensive thing that most families buy down to, wait for it, one point six percent. Now I think you'll agree that's pretty ordinary use of capex. So it's no wonder that many of the business models are attacking um, personal uh, use of the car uh, as a big opportunity. Okay, so that's the, that's the definition. So one of the first things we can do with spare capacity is to monetize it. So we can sell it. So, and some of the business models for doing this are really quite interesting. So one of my favorites is park at my place. So so if, if you happen to own a house near a, um, let's say Wembley Stadium, your driveway is spare capacity that could be sold. So park at my place matches people with spare space in their driveway with people who want to park. So it's a way to monetize something that's never been monetized before. There are peer-to-peer -peer models where private car owners can rent their cars out to, you know, when they're not being used. And one of the leading uh, massively growing websites around the world is Airbnb, one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorites. And that's where um, people rent out uh, spare rooms and apartments. And again, if we think about uh, Australia, there's been a claim that Australia's got a shortage of houses. But if I said to you, how many spare rooms are there in Australia, we'd come up with something you know, well north of a million. So on one hand, we're saying we haven't got enough houses. But if you think about the spare rooms in Australia, it's massive. So you know, Airbnb, already there are more Airbnb rooms in New York than there are hotel rooms. So that's a, a massive business. But really the ultimate thing about spare capacity is to not have it, to eliminate it. So what that means is we access it, 
we don't own it. So uh, an easy example of that is a beach house. Lots of Australians have owned a beach house. I don't need to own a beach house. If using Airbnb, I can access a beach house when I want it. I don't necessarily need to own a car if I can access Uber uh, and get my own, have my own private driver um, whenever I need transport. So this is really clever. So in Airbnb, it's dealing with two sides of this. So it's enabling people who've got spare capacity to sell it, and it's enabling people like me who don't want to own, a, own an apartment in Istanbul or own a beach house to access it when I need it, but not necessarily without owning it. So there's, now that you start thinking about spare capacity, you're going to see it everywhere. Um, and you can so start to get the sense when, when utilisation of valuable assets is so poor, why this is creating a big opportunity for disruption and why it's creating a big opportunity for new business models. Good luck.